Hi there, welcome to A Maker Studios YouTube channel. My name is Leonep and I am so glad that you are here with us. Normally you'll find me on my own YouTube channel, DIY Beauty on Purpose, where I create DIY home decor all on a budget. Today we are updating an old vase. It's not so old, it just needs a little pick me up and I'm excited. I'm gonna be using some stamps and some paint and I'm just gonna show you how you can take something that it's been in your home that just needs a little something new to it and using a few items from A Maker Studios, you can give it a whole new look. I can't wait to show you. Before we get started, I'm gonna quickly go over the supplies and items that we're gonna be using so that you can take notes. Of course, the first item that I'm going to be using is my vase. As you can tell, it just has had better days. It actually broke here a little bit. I originally got it at Target at the Target dollar spot for $5, which is actually not a bad deal. Let me take that off while I'm at it. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a great quality vase. It's just I've had it now for a while and um, it just needs a little pick me up. But this is the vase that we're going to be updating. I'm also going to be using some of a maker's stamps i actually used some of these very recently in another video here on this youtube channel and i actually cut it up it came part of like a, a bigger set but uh, i cut up because i wanted to use certain ones i think i used these three for a wrapping paper that i made if you haven't watched that video it is um, on this uh, channel, just kind of scroll down after you watch this one. I showed how to make a custom wrapping paper and how to make a cute little gift bag with it. So, so fun. Anyway, so I used those for this. And um, so today I want to use some other ones because I am just obsessed with how pretty these stamps are. Look how pretty these are. I think this is the one that I'm going with. Let's see, maybe these two, um, we'll have to see. But anyways, um, so we're going to be using these stamps and we're going to be using the Well I Declare. It's a white gel art ink by um, A Maker Studio. Really good ink to use with your stamps. And then I'm also going to be using Amy Howard at Home One Step Sample Paint. And this is in their, oh goodness, I ripped that up. Gartucci Green? Am I saying that right? Um, but it's a beautiful green. Again, I've used this before and I, I see it more as a bluish teal color versus a green. But let me know what you, what you think. Write it down in the comments. Is it a blue or a green? Let me know. All right, so that's what we're gonna be using. And I'm also gonna be using A Maker Studios Angled um, Specialty Brush. This is a really unique brush. I have not used it in a while. I think I've only used it once as a matter of fact, but I, I love the angle that it has and I love that it's square and a lot of paint. It can hold a lot of paint and it just, when you put some paint, it just goes a long way. And who wants to be, you know, re-dipping all the time? So this is a really good brush and that's what we're going to be using. Before we get to painting, I wanna tell you why I'm, uh, or what I'm going to be using the vase for. So in my living room, I um, have a summer themed beachy look for this summer. And normally I keep it pretty just general summer. And this year I decided to go very beachy, very um, um, ocean, that kind of feel. And um, I have an entryway little area where I had uh, Memorial Day style decor. I wanna update that little entryway and take away the Memorial Day look and feel and um, give it a little update. So this vase is gonna go on there and I wanna give it a little bit more of a summer feel. I forgot to tell you, I am also gonna be using the Spa White. Um, it kinda looks a little bit very close to this, the color that it already has, but this is so that we can paint because we're gonna do two colors on the vase. So let's get to that. All right, the first color that I'm gonna do is the Spa White and I am going to paint half of it. Now I want it to be a little bit uh, less than half so I want the bottom half to be in the green and then I want the spa white to be on the top and I think I'm gonna do it kind of like where I want the handle to also have the two-tone so I'm thinking somewhere around here normally I would tape it with like a painter's tape but today I actually want that hand painted look and so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna freehand it 
and cross my fingers and pray that um, it works. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be painting um, maybe about one third of the vase in the spot white. So, look how beautiful that white is. It just has like a grayish undertone and I like it. I every, every time I use it, I say how much I love it because I normally go with like a bright white, kind of like the ink right here. And I, and I love the bright white, don't get me wrong. But every so often, it's just nice to use something a little different. All right, and as I mentioned, I'm not gonna use any painter's tape because I want um, to have that hand painted look. You know what I'm talking about. It's like when you have like ceramic and um, it just has that hand painted look. It's hard to explain, but okay. So I'm just going to start painting and see how this starts to come along. Look how beautiful that looks. And the, the brushes, oh, it's lovely. I'm gonna go just has the like what one third mark because I do want to then put the green over the white and that's what we'll do there and although it's gonna have that hand painted look I am going to try to keep it as straight as possible I'm just not looking for a perfect straight line that you would want maybe with a the painter's tape And so I'm also going to go, of course, under the handle. And I'm also going to paint the handle with the same two-tone. Um, I think that's gonna look super cute. The brush is awesome for this um, project. It just has such good, well, the paint itself has great coverage. So that's just amazing to begin with. And then the brush just helps it just glide and give it that extra um, good, good coverage. All right, so we're gonna do underneath here. And then we're also gonna be doing, like I said, the handle. And I want to keep it right around the same um, level as I did the, the actual vase can't forget the bottom I'm gonna let it dry I'm gonna wash the brush dry it really well and then we're gonna do the same thing with the green but we're gonna go from the bottom up and we're just gonna overlap a little bit of the white all right so this is where we're at in some spots it's still a little tacky but on the bottom where I'm going to be painting it's dry so we're just gonna move along that's looking pretty nice. I like how it's somewhat close to the original color, but it just looks just fresh. So we're gonna do the same thing now. I did wash the brush and dry lit really, really well with a towel. And um, so now we're going to use the green. Look how pretty that looks. Let me Isn't that pretty? All right, we're just gonna start with what's on here so that we're not wasting any color there you go put my hand in here we're gonna start painting look how pretty that is oh, I can't get over it that's beautiful 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 color And because the paint has a great coverage, a little goes a long way, like I said. Uh, I mean, I've used this now several times and I still have enough. Now, it depends, of course, on the size of your project, but overall, it's just such great coverage. All right, so now we're getting closer to the, where we're gonna overlap. And I just want to do one brush stroke because if I overwork that white, it may 
I don't know, it may like soften the white and then it just blend colors, which wouldn't be a horrible idea, but I'm just, that's not the look I'm going for for today. Okay. Putting the hand inside the vase works really well, actually. All right. Uh, this may be too much. All right. Let's see how we're going to do this. I may have to go a little higher. course we got to paint the handle to match the level of the rest of the paint. And then let that one dry. Let me give you a close up before I... Isn't those colors pretty? And how easy is this to just update something that I already had at home with just some paint and then of course we're going to make it even prettier with some stamps so we'll be back all right so here we are this is where we're at with our vase i love it so it's not perfect at all after it dried i just realized i had a little bit more paint in some areas than than some but it's okay work i can work with this so now the plan is to get it stamped and i'm kind of torn between so here's the plan I want to use just one stamp and just stamp like this with the white. I think that's going to look pretty, just like all over, right? Um, however, I'm trying to decide if I should do this one. It's a little smaller. I'm going to show you. See, it'll just be a detail. Or if I should do one of these, it's going to be taller. Uh, maybe both maybe alternate them that might be good I think I'm gonna do that all right let's cut these so if you're not familiar with uh, a maker studios stamps they normally come in a kind of like a square and they're all together and although you can use them like that it's so much easier to just cut them so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut that one and that one how cute that they even have the little details like those swirls so cute I'm gonna use a makeup sponge I always love having these on hands I stencil with these I, I do all kinds of stuff and you can find them at the dollar store really inexpensive and then of course we're gonna use our um, well I declare gel art ink and I'm just going to use my little bowl here that I normally use. What we're going to do is we're going to dab and then we're going to add it to the um, stamp and then keep stamping. Um, the stamp comes with two clear back, so one's a backing and one's like the top. And then what you want to do, they both look the same, but actually one of them is thinner than the other one. That's how you know which one's the top one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the one. We're going to keep that to the side because once we wash the stamp, we want to cover them again. Same thing with this one. This is the thinner of the bow. So if I do one here, then I want to do another one completely across from it and then go in the middle of those and the middle of those. Okay, so we're just going to start with the larger one. We're just going to, let's just do it. Let's just get to it. So I'm going to um, dip my sponge in it. And I'm not going to do much because I'm not looking for it to be full coverage when I stamp it. I do want it to look like a stamp. So almost like a little bit of a distressed look. But I do want it to have. So I'm just going to start stamping. All right. And I think I'm going to do one right here. Let's see. And once you stamp it, you just kind of press it, but don't wiggle it. Just let it be and then lift up. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's exactly what I was looking for. All right, so now that we have that side, I want to do one on the absolute opposite side. So it's looking like it's going to be around right here. But first, I'm going to add more ink. Okay, 
So let's see. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just as, as much across as I can get it. All right, so we're gonna put it right there, not move it too much, press it. And then I'm gonna lift up. Beautiful. So now I have one there and one there. Now, I think I wanna do one here and then do another one across. I think that's gonna work out really well. Once again, just adding a little bit. It still has some on it. Just freshen it up with um, some more. Okay, so, so I'm just looking for the middle of the one over here and then here, just kind of eyeing it out. And take your time when stamping it, especially on a surface like this that's kind of rounded. Beautiful. All right, and then of course we want to do one across from that one that's going to be somewhat in the middle of the other two. All right, let's see. So maybe around here. Anyway, so I was saying when you have a surface that's kind of rounded like this one, it could be very easy to kind of slide because you have the ink and it could slide on you. So just be take your time, do it slowly, and don't be in a rush. Look how pretty that looks. I like it. All right, we're gonna put this one to the side and we're gonna wash it here in just a minute. And then now we're gonna go with the smaller one and we're just gonna add this one right in between. And same thing. So we're just gonna add it right here. Stamp it. And lift it up. Look how pretty that looks. It's the perfect complement to the other stamp. And then do one here in the center of these two. <laughs> and it doesn't get easier. I mean, it's also fun. But think about it, at the end of this project, I'm gonna have a beautiful custom vase that goes perfectly with the decor colors that I have in my living room right now. And I did it myself. Let me see if I can fit one here. I think I can, I just gotta cut a little bit more of the plastic and I think I can make it fit. Yep, it's gonna be perfect. There you go. So, so pretty. All right, so I grabbed some florals that I already had on hand just to kind of see what reminds me of like summer. And I think these like onion grassy ones that I got um, at Dollar Tree, I think they have that look like, like the grass is overgrown. You know what I'm talking about? And then these are actually winter ones. Like it has a little bit of frost, but I, I don't know, there's something about it that kind of makes me feel of the beach, like it gives me that feeling. And then I have these here that I just think are beautiful. And I also have these. So let's just start building and see where things go. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of hot glue at the bottom, not much, and then just kind of drop this right there. See that in there? And it'll, it'll hold. Just want something to stick to. Push it right in the center. Okay. I like that so far. I think if I put these towards the bottom, just filling up that void space right there. Wouldn't that be pretty? I'm gonna take some of these longer ones and I'm gonna cut them separately so that I can put them in um, just through the middle of the grassy one. I'm 
pretty. I'm still not sure about these. I think I feel like they look pretty, but just a bit too much for my what I'm envisioning. Let me see some of these little baby's breath one. That might be a bit better. Don't you think? All right, friends, this is it for today. You're gonna have to let me know what you think of this vase upgrade. Again, the vase wasn't extremely old, but it was just dingy and it just needed a little bit of a pick me up. But you're gonna have to let me know what you think. I love the design. I love the stamps and these two colors together are amazing. Love, love, love. And then of course, with the flower arrangements, I think it just finished it off. I want to thank you for watching and taking the time to come here with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank A Maker Studio for having me here on the platform once again. And I want to invite you to come visit my YouTube channel, DIY Beauty on Purpose. If you love what you see there, I hope you join our YouTube family there as well. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of their content. Also, don't forget to check out the description box. There's tons of information there and there are also links to where you can find all of these items right there to A Maker's Studio. Have a blessed day, have fun creating, and I'll see you later. Bye.